Chapter 2, Embrace the Rage. Embracing the rage took me to another level. A lot of the things in my life made me angry, and I learned how to embrace that inner feeling to bring about positive change. All the things I'm teaching you in this book are building confidence based around the process of change. You have to decide you want to dig deep. Part of that was you deciding to read this book. Now you need to ask yourself this question. Why do you want the change? I wanted the change because I was tired of being that kid that didn't have the financial foundation and a setup that his friends did. I was tired of being that kid that felt like we couldn't connect the dots financially and was living paycheck to paycheck. I was tired of being that kid that watched my parents fight and my dad being on strike at work. Financial IQ or the concept of saving money. Save, all right, I'll start this, this page over again. I'm tired of being that kid. It's my friend's hat. Okay, I got that right. So I'll start right after I had three, two, one. I was tired of being that kid that felt like we couldn't connect the dots financially and was always living paycheck to paycheck. I was tired of being that kid that watched my parents fight and my dad being on strike at work. Financial IQ or the concept of saving and making money wasn't a topic of discussion or nor was it understood. I was tired of feeling like that. I was worth, fuck, three, two, one. I was tired of feeling like I was worth less than others because I lived in a trailer, because I didn't have the fresh gear to wear. I was tired of the entire situation. Was I starving? Absolutely not. But we probably should have been on government assistance for sure. My mom might have been too proud to do that, but the reality is we probably would have been better if we did. The struggle from check to check was real. My mom was a waitress. My dad wasn't around much. I was tired of the never-ending struggle, and I knew there had to be a better way. Off top of this, I would consider myself less than a great, great, three, two, one. On top of this, I would consider myself a less than great athlete. I worked my ass off, but I wasn't able to translate that always onto the court or the field. I really believed that my way out of my situation was going to be a scholarship, but in reality, I wasn't even being recruited. I started thinking to myself, what am I going to do? Dig deep. I started digging deeper and deeper into the weeds of my mind to confront and embrace these feelings. I was flat out sick and tired of it. These feelings and these things were meaningful, upsetting, and hurtful. I was upset that my parents were split up and that my dad left when I was 11 years old. I was upset that he didn't spend much time with me and that he spent much of his money on the lottery. I was upset that my mom struggled to the point of barely being able to pay the rent. She worked like crazy and was probably beaten to a pulp, mentally and physically. I was upset that I had to buy the dope shit at my friend's yard sale two years after he wore it because I couldn't afford it. I mean, I wanted to be the guy with the house, with the pool and all the dope rides and somebody in the community that people looked up to. I wanted to understand finances. I wanted to create a legacy that changed my family for future generations. I wanted all those things. Embracing my desire for all these things helped me shape myself to be different. It's a painful process and for some, the pain is too great. The pain paralyzes them and they're stuck. I urge you to dive deep, confront the pain and use it to get better. I use this very process to change my life for the better. What sticks out? All of the things I'm teaching you in this book are going to help you, but you have to embrace these items that mean the most to you. For me, one of those things is the trailer that I grew up in. I think back and remember to being so old. Wait, I think back to my, all right, three, two, one. What sticks out? All of the things that I'm teaching you in this book are going to help you, but you have to embrace the items that mean the most to you. For me, one of those things is the trailer that I grew up in. I think back and remember it being so old, the roof would almost fall in when it snow. Fuck, I had to redo that again. Get my lips out, lisp. Those are all right. Well, I'll do it one more time. <clears throat> what sticks out? All of the things I'm teaching you in this book are going to help you, but you have to embrace these items that mean the most to you. For me, one of those things is definitely the trailer that I grew up in. I think back and remember, remember it being so old that the roof would almost fall in when it snowed. 
I remember having to work with my uncle to build that makeshift brace just to hold the ceiling up. And even after that, I'd have to go outside and push the snow off the roof with a motherfucking broom so it wouldn't collapse. When I think of that, I think to myself, are you fucking kidding me? It was just the reality of my situation. My bedroom was smaller than a walk-in closet. My car growing up had one door handle. I was climbing through the back door at the gas station on the passenger side, hoping no one would see me. All that shit motivated me back then and still motivates me today. I embraced the rage a long I embraced that rage a long time ago and hating my situation and forcing myself to do things I needed to do to get out of it and better my family forever. It's a little off, but I think it'll still work. All right. What drives you? Man, fuck all that. That's exactly how I felt when I think about those things. And that's what helped drive me to another level. One of those things that I dealt with and struggled with was that my dad was a bit of a loner and never really engaged much, especially with me. Part of that drive gets me uh, three, two, three, two, one. What drives you? Man, fuck all that. That's exactly how I would feel when I think about those things. And that's what helped drive me to another level. One of those things that I dealt with and struggled with was that my dad was a bit of a loner and never engaged much with me. Part of what drives me, <clears throat> try, part three, two, one. Part of that drives me internalized, internalized, fucking internalized. Is that the word? Gets into okay, okay, got okay. Yeah. So I, when I read that, it didn't even read back like that in my brain. All right, sorry. Kyle, should I do the whole paragraph again? Okay. All right. Good. All right. Three, two, one. Part of that drive gets internalized and you become biologically connected to it. I know this because I have certain triggers from this experience with my father. For example, my kids ask me to do certain things that my dad used to say no, I always say yes. Even when I don't want to, I always say yes. This is something I wanted badly from my dad. So I know this is something I wanted to change. As I'm reading this back, well, this isn't part of the book, but as I'm reading this back, the, this is exactly how my brain works. Like these little like sub chapters. It's like, I, I, it's just the way that it, yeah. <clears throat> All right. Three, two, one. Zoom in. Digging. Zoom in. Digging into what drives you is the key. That's where much of the difference is. Zooming in on these things that can be painful because these are the things that shape you as a person. Sometimes you felt like there was no, no ah, fuck. All right, three, let me reread this real quick. All right, I got it. All right, zoom in. Digging into what drives you is key. That's where much of the difference is. Zooming in on these things can be painful because these things that shaped you as a person, because these are the things that shaped you as a person. I'm like a nine take homie on this paragraph for some reason. Yeah, I know. I got it. Three. It's not even because it's emotional. It's because I can't read. <laughs> There's a difference. There's a difference here. Yeah. All right. All right. Ready? We're, we're getting it this time, Kyle. <laughs> Zoom in. Digging into what drives you is the key. That's where much of the difference is. Zooming in on the things can be painful because these are the things that shaped you as a person. Sometimes you felt like there was no way possible out and or a way, fuck. Sometimes you felt like there was no possible way out or a way to change your situation. But at the same time, it's those experiences that can drive you to another level if you learn how to harness them the right way. Resources, <clears throat> resources seem slim at the th three, two, one. Resources seem slim at the time, especially with with not the, my brain, resource, resources seem slim at the time, especially with the internet not being around. How do I learn? What do I do for a job? How do we change the situation? How do I help my mom and not have her look like she's so stressed out all the time that she's crying? How do we increase our financial IQ? How do I change the path? All of these questions were raised in my head. And then the biggest question why not me? I knew that I could 
and would be the person that would make all these changes for myself and my family. I'm going to run that back one more time, Kyle. I knew that I could and I would be the person to make all these changes for myself and my family. The chip on my shoulder. I became a machine. I was willing to do whatever it took to get to an entirely new level. Everything that happened up to this point in my life contributed to that chip on my shoulder. By this time, it wasn't just about me anymore. I was hyper-focused on creating generational change. I wanted to show people from my area what was actually possible. I wanted to be the person they could look up to. I wasn't going to stop until that entire landscape was different. At 15 years old, these thoughts woke my ass up. No one was going to come do it for me. No one fucking cares. It's just the fucking truth. No one cares that you're a fourth generation coal miner. No one cares that your mom can barely pay the rent. No one cares that your dad left at 11 years old and isn't, and isn't spending time with you. No one is coming to save you. It's all on me. Once I realized that, I shouldered that 300 pound gorilla and carried him as far as I could. I needed to produce the changes I desired. It didn't stop when I started to see results either. The rage inside me, the jet full, the jet full. <clears throat> I'm gonna start that paragraph over again. Three, two, one. It's all on me. Once I realized that, I shouldered that 300 pound gorilla and carried him as far as I needed to to produce the results of change I desired. It didn't stop when I started to see the results either. The rage inside was the jet fuel that kept me going. It was a relentless combined, relentlessness, three, two, one. It was a relent, <clears throat> it was a relentlessness combined with something I love to do. It takes all the, fuck, all right, I got this. It was a, rel I can't fucking talk. I need a beer. All right. <laughs> yeah. Can I get the wang out my mouth? <laughs> Jesus. All right. <laughs> I'm going to do this with you guys one day, by the way. Each one of you fuckers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right. Three, two, one. It was a real. I probably didn't say this word. Danny probably wrote it. Because <laughs> I obviously cannot say it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If I do, that's what I'm going to. It was a relentlessness combined with something I love to do. It takes all the pieces of the puzzle to make the change. All of it. The question you need to ask yourself. Fuck. The questions you need to ask yourself are, are you willing to dig deep enough to make it happen? Are you willing to be honest with yourself? And are you willing to put in the work? That's what you have to ask yourself. Billing... That's what you have to ask yourself. Being willing to do those things is the difference maker you've been looking for. Man, that was a struggle bus fucking paragraph. All right. Three, two, one. Where the confidence came from. At the base level, my confidence came from lifting weights. This is important to understand because the situation, ah, where the confidence came from. At the base level, my confidence came from lifting weights. This is important to understand because the situation we were in growing up was tough. I felt less than, and no one was telling me I couldn't do something, but no one was building me up either. To be honest, no one around me was probably even really aware. There were never talks about doing whatever we wanted to do. There was never any discussions about finances. It was all about survival. If you're in an environment such as this, it's imperative to understand that there are, there are many opportunities beyond the life you're living. You won't go anywhere. Fuck. Here we do that. It's just not flowing. All right. <clears throat> Three, two, one. There were never talks about doing whatever we wanted to do. There were never discussions about finances. It was all about survival. If you're in an environment such as this, it's imperative to understand that there are many opportunities beyond the life you're living. You won't go anywhere in life until you start to understand this key component. Being able to witness a few people going from the coal mine to entrepreneurs and being successful with it was very important for me. It doesn't have to be some crazy story 
It just has to be impactful and meaningful to you. Embracing adversity and tackling it head on is essential to succeeding. Fuel for the fire. Having strong reminders to use fuel is a powerful thing to use as fuel. Three, two, one. Fuel for the fire. Having strong reminders to use as fuel is a powerful thing. This is especially, ugh. Fuel for the fire. Having strong reminders to use as fuel is a powerful thing. This is especially important for the days you don't feel like doing anything. I think about my mom heating our breakfast. Heating our breakfast before school with the oven. All right. <clears throat> Okay. Fuel for the fire. Having strong reminders to use as fuel is a powerful thing. This is in, I cannot say especially. Especially. Huh? Yeah, I'm going to do it over because I need to clean it up. Fuck. All right. Having strong reminders to use as fuel is a powerful thing. This is especially important for the days you don't feel like doing anything. I think about my mom serving us breakfast before school, heating our, well, because this actually reads not all the way right, so I'm going to change it a little bit. Fuel for the fire. Having strong reminders is, fuck, fuel for the fire. Having strong reminders to use as fuel is a powerful thing. This is especially important for the days where you don't feel like doing anything. I think about my mom heating our kitchen at breakfast with our oven because we didn't have oil for the heater. So there was no electric heat. It was actually being heated. Fuck, I'll talk that story later. All right, I'll try to get through this. Fuel for the fire. Having strong reminders to use as fuel is a powerful thing. This is especially important for the days where you don't feel like doing anything. I think about my mom heating our breakfast before school with our oven because we didn't have oil for the heater for the actual heat. The electric was still on and the oven doors were open and that's how we were getting our heat for our house. I think about how upset she was when she didn't get the house we were supposed to get. Did I go to the right page? 26, okay. Yep, I'm just starting a whole new thought, I guess. Okay. I think, about, I think about how upset she was when we didn't get the house we were supposed to get. I think about how we got evicted because we couldn't pay the rent. I think about how my uncle coming over to put up a brace in our trailer because it was falling in. I think about the motherfuckers laughing at my car when I was at the gas station because only one of my door handles work. I had to climb through the back passenger seat. I think about my parents fighting. A, all right. Man, my fucking, my thoughts are all over the place. Three, two, one. I think about how upset she was when she didn't get the house we were supposed to get. I think about how we got evicted because we couldn't pay the rent. I think about my uncle coming over to put up the brace because the trailer was falling in. I think about the motherfuckers laughing at my car when I was at the gas station because only one of my door handles worked. I had to climb through the back passenger seat. I think about my parents fighting and my dad leaving on Christmas Eve. Man, I was only 11 years old. I think about my dad being on strike. Three, two, one. I think about my dad being on strike at work and trying different businesses that never worked out. I think about my grandparents and my aunt showing up in the middle of the night with groceries because my mom couldn't afford them. I think about watching my mom grind every single day, waiting tables, cleaning, and making ends meet. I think about how meticulous our yard was around the trailer because my mom knew we had the shittiest house on the street. I think about the pride in three, two, one. I think about the pride she maintained even despite our situation. All of that is my fuel. It lights my fire Three, two, one. All of that is my fuel. It lights my fire and you better fucking believe it gets me out of bed every day with the desire to win and get better. I wouldn't change anything. Was I tired of all these things? Yes. Was I tired of living like this? Did I hate it all the time? Yes. Yet, at the end of the day, I wouldn't change a single thing. I tell my mom this all the time to this day. That I, and I tell my, <clears throat> yet, all right, I'm starting over. I wouldn't change anything. Was I tired of all these things? Yes. Was I tired of living like this? Did I hate it all the time? Yes. Yet at the end of the day, I wouldn't change a single thing. 
I tell my mom all the time, still to this day, and I would tell my dad the same if he was still alive. If I had a different childhood and upbringing, I would have never impacted the number of people that I have. I wouldn't be me. I'm me because of those situations. I'm me because I had to fight through it, the adversity. I'm me because I had to take, all right, I like this chapter. Hold on. It's amazing. <clears throat> Three, two, one. If I had a different childhood and upbringing, I would have never, if I had a different childhood and upbringing, I would have never impacted the number of people that I have. I wouldn't be me. I'm me because of those situations. I'm me because I had to fight through adversity. I'm me because I had to take them head on and say, I want something different. I believe everybody has their own versions of this. It doesn't matter if your situation isn't as severe as mine was. What's important is taking what you have, adding to the pot, and using it as fuel to propel you forward. <clears throat> hey, we're almost there. All right. The all-in mentality. I was told that I could work as much as I wanted. Three, two, one. The all-in mentality. I was told that I could work as much as I wanted when I started my coal mine gig. That right there gave me the path. I could see my way out. Not only that, I was able to experience one of the most dangerous and difficult jobs on the planet. A job that three generations of my family had experienced. Once I did this job, I knew for a fact that everything else would be easy in comparison. It gave me the perspective I'll never forget. From my coal mining experience, I was able to develop three, two, one. From my coal mining experiences, I was able to develop modern day principles to share with the world. I knew this was about to set my life on fire. Was it easy? Absolutely not. But I was all in. Doing something hard, gaining experience, and applying what I learned was priceless. It was all I needed. Dig deep on your why. This book is about how to build confidence. It doesn't start out as, all right, I'm almost there, G, come on. Three, two, one. Dig deep on your why. This book is, this book is, this book is about how to build confidence. This book is about how to build confidence. It starts out, three, two, one. This book is about how to build confidence. I didn't start out as a confident person. I built confidence through lifting weights, through consistency, and through the rage and hate for my situation. And because I hated it to the deepest point of my beating, and because I hated it to the deepest point of my being, I changed it forever. I constructed a plan, adjusted things when I needed to, and consistently executed at a high level. I don't do anything special, I just don't fucking miss. Dig deep on why you want to change your situation. Everybody wants something different. Everybody has a dream, but most people give up. They give in because they don't want to dig deep, and they find... Three, two, one. They give in because they don't want to dig deep and find the answers. They give in because they really don't believe... Three, two, one. They give in... They give in because they really don't believe or believe it in... They get, Jesus, three, I'm one paragraph away. They give in because they really don't believe it or believe in themselves. It's easy to feel alone. There wasn't anyone, it's easy to feel alone. There wasn't anyone around me that did what I did. That around me that did what I did. All right, three, two, one. It's easy to feel alone. There wasn't anyone around me that did what I did. There wasn't anyone around that could give me advice. No one around me understood what I was trying to do. My parents and everybody believed in me, but they didn't understand what was possible. Well, guess what? It's all possible. I proved it, and I'm going to continue to prove it. And it can be possible for you too. <clears throat>